Hey friends, welcome back to Pharmakia Revealed. I believe this is the 14th uh, study. There's just so much in scripture uh, about Pharmakia and so much that is um, clearly coming to pass and beginning to come to pass. So many precursors, it's truly remarkable. Uh, you know, as we continue in this period of time, the beginning of sorrows, the uh, mind control aspect, the lack of critical thought, the um, people are just zombies um, who have no love for the truth, who uh, believe the scientists, who whose faith is scientism, even if they speak the name of Jesus. That's not my Jesus in a lot of cases. Um, you know, the people who think that they, you know, they have a, a high paying job, that sort of thing. So they think that they are very smart, but in reality, they're, there's hardly anybody home. Um, and this is really hard to navigate in this world. Furthermore, we're in a period of just extreme planned obsolescence. Uh, it is truly remarkable. We had to replace the engine on our truck and uh, it failed. Yeah. And so a new engine was just put in as I'm recording this. They went and got it yesterday. And it's still not right. It's not the truck. It's the engine. Brand new engine. Well, it's not entirely brand new because no engines are new anymore. They're all uh, have, have a conglomeration of used, remanufactured parts and new parts. And there's still parts shortages. I think a lot of people think everything's back to normal. Everything's back to normal. It's not. It's not back to normal. Not my kind of normal. Uh, and, and people are going insane. I just can't even get into this. I just can't even get into that right now because yeah, we, we we're falsely accused. So, so falsely accused. So falsely accused of just reprehensible things. And, and you know, Dave, so, so there's that thing. And then um, Dave <sighs> won't do a project if there is a, if the people aren't clear, you know, about what's happening. He had a super simple landscaping project and people were, were confused. And they tried to say that they, that they, they understood everything. But what they were saying was just, there's clearly, they were so confused. And that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, he's been in a situation where you know, he's proceeded and that sort of thing. Uh, husbands and wives don't even communicate in person anymore, apparently. And this is, this is, this is, these are older couples that we've had these experiences with. Uh, you know, 60s, 70s, I don't know about the 80s, but 60s and 70s. And they rely on their smart devices for their relationships. That's not a relationship with a person. You're having a relationship with technology. You know, and I understand, you know, looping people in on emails and that sort of thing, but their everything, their relation, people's relationships rely on technology. They don't just talk in person anymore. No wonder the world's being judged. It's just such a mess. Oh, and to top it off, I got stung by, I don't know if you can tell, but my middle finger is swollen because I got stung by a wasp this morning. I don't know if you've ever been stung by a wasp, but you don't want to because it hurts like a mother. <laughs> It hurts so bad. And I got stung by a wasp earlier this summer in my arm up here. My arm doubled in size. Uh, so, I mean, I've got, you know, things that I'm doing, but I did, I did have bentonite on it for quite some time. Bentonite clay, Redmond bentonite clay is what I use. I'll link to that below. Um, and this, of course, I'm drinking my tea now, which, uh, uh, hello, God's promises over here. But um, my tea is the tea that I um, share in my These Herbs Save My Life video. And of course, only God can save um, the lives. But he does give us information that can help improve our health. Anyways, the more, the farther we move along in this, the more and the more I study, the more I just don't see it's not possible that we're in this time. Especially when it comes to the brain issue. 
and the emotion driven issue. People are so driven by emotion. It's, it's absolutely remarkable. It, it really is. And of course we've got the, the fires, I mean, the, the smoke, the dark day of the Lord. But then at the same time, you know, prophetically speaking, there are going to be periods of time where the sun scorches. And so we've got that too. Uh, and of course the weather sorcerers can't predict anything because they're sorcerers. And yes, I understand that there is a geoengineering agenda underway. Personally, I believe that it's more of a poison everyone and everything agenda than uh, truly an ability to control the weather because if they were truly controlling the weather, they would be knowing what's happening and what's going to happen. And they just don't. They just don't. The radar, for example, here, frequently wrong. Frequently wrong. Oftentimes it says it's raining. It's sunny. Oftentimes it says it's sunny. It's raining. So they don't know. If they can't even get the radar right, how are they gonna get anything else right? Everything's gonna be destroyed. Everything's being destroyed. This race is exhausting. It is exhausting. It is, it is so hard to live in the beginning of sorrows. I can only imagine how hard it's gonna be in 20 years. I did some looking recently in Revelation. When's the second seal going to be opened? You know, the, the, this whole period of time is, is like a woman in travail, birth pains. And the second seal could be 2028, 2030. It, it really could be. Um, if the period of time, we know it's not seven years, it's literally impossible to go read your Bible and look at the Texas Receptus Greek. It's literally impossible. It can't be seven years. Go look at the evidence. <laughs> the evidence is all over scripture. Um, it, it, I was looking at it and I think it could be 2028 or 2030 before the second seal is even opened. <sighs> this world is exhausting. Uh, not to sound like a complainer, but it is. Dealing with people is harder and harder. Dealing with things like the truck um, is harder and harder. But the thing is that, you know, we, everybody's having car problems. Everybody's having electrical problems. Appliances are going out. I have a friend who I think she's on her third refrigerator this year. Yeah. And her washer's broken twice, I think. Something like that. The planned obsolescence agenda is remarkable, but it all is, is a fulfillment of prophecy because God says I'm going to destroy it all. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into the pharmacia aspect. Let's get into the poison snake bite and prophecy. Jeremiah chapter 9. Uh, let's see, we're looking at verse 13. And the Lord saith, because they are right. Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Balim, which their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood. That's, that's bitterness. And give them water of gall, poison, to drink. I will scatter them also among the heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. This is what we're looking at because the world is beyond evil. People talk about the time of Noah a lot. We're looking at worse. It's going to get worse. People are going to get more and more violent. Um, you know, so many people have no idea that the world is under judgment. And this is not a new problem. In the Old Testament, there's at least one scripture that says, you know, the, that talks about how the, the storks and the birds of the air know their time. They know their appointed time. But my people know not my judgment. 
His true people see what's going on. You guys see what's going on. You know what's going on. You see this. You see this. You had, there's so many people the past few years. Why did God allow COVID? Why would he allow such a terrible virus to shut down our beloved, precious, apostate church? I love you if you go to church, a little love and love it at the whole lump. Be careful. Oh, praise the Lord. The vaccine's going to save us from this virus that has never been isolated per the CDC documentation. How did they develop a targeted snake bite without any isolates? How does that work? It doesn't because it's all a bunch of hokum. It's pharmacia. It's witchcraft. It's sorcery. Search our website for the word isolated for a five minute video on how viruses are not isolated and not proven to cause harm. Because they aren't isolated and they aren't proven to cause harm. Doesn't mean that people don't get sick. We're just told it's a virus. Cause germ theory is scary. So why is the world under judgment? Because they have forsaken God's law, which I set, which he set before us and have not obeyed his voice. People are so disobedient, willfully disobedient. <sighs> they don't walk. Their path of life is not within him. They've walked after the imagination of their own heart. There's the stubbornness of their own heart. And after Balim, which their fathers taught them. <sighs> their fathers taught them. God hates man's traditions. Churchianity today is all tradition. The pagan holy days are all man's tradition. All right, this brings us to modern Baal worship. I can find the papers. Here we go. This is a pretty interesting topic, I gotta say. Because so people today, they're stubborn, they're, they're worshiping Baal. Baal, Baal, call him what he will, I don't care. Okay, this is seen in stadiums and theaters today. Public sex, basically. You got people gyrating on stage. I mean, you, even in the 90s, you had the Backstreet Boys up on stage in front of prepubescent girls, preteens, literally humping the stage. It's just sickening, disgusting. These are men in their 20s, some of them in their late 20s, doing that sort of thing in front of preteen girls. Uh, you got public sex in the movies. Uh, look at the confusion movement and what they do in the streets. In stadiums uh, with the, the singers and such. And that's basically public sex acts. Those are lewd acts. All of these things revere ball. You've also got celebrity worship um, of those dancers and musicians who lead us. Madonna, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. I don't even know if she's around anymore. I don't even know who's popular today. Uh, in, the, in the past, we've got Mick Jagger, Michael Jackson, Elvis. I know some people go, oh, Elvis, he's so good. Have you watched his pelvis? <laughs> no, that is not from the Lord. It doesn't matter if he sings hymns, <laughs> which by the way, I don't know. I don't think all hymns are bad, but uh, are, are non-biblical, but some of them absolutely are. He used to sing some in Job's Daughters. Uh, Job's Daughters is a Masonic organization for young females, specifically teenage girls. All right. Uh, another form of modern ball worship is uh, child sacrifice, abortion. Uh, also giving your children to the state, state worship, uh, 
via schools. I mean, if you if you send your I'm not judging you, okay. If if you if your kid goes to goes to public school, because I I know some people are single and you got to make a living. And I validate that I can't judge that, but you know you, you do your part at home. I'm sure to uh, ensure your child understands the truth. That would be so hard. It'd be so. I just can't imagine how hard that would be. Uh, which goes back to our three-part video series on um, what was it? Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear. But you know people have submitted to the toxic snake bite. This, of course, is sacrificing the temple of the living God. Uh, this is what we have seen thus far. It can't be the mark of the beast. Have you read the verse before the mark of the beast? Have you read the entire book of Revelation? People are so lazy in their studies. So lazy. Um, so, you know, there are some people who have gotten it and repent and I believe they are sincere. It's got to be real hard for, for them. Some do regret it, but most don't. Most have no idea. Still. <laughs> Cognitive dissonance, anyone? All the evidence in the world and no clue. No clue. No clue what they have done to themselves. No clue that they have destroyed the temple of the living God, basically. <sighs> Anyways. Uh, so, this, you know, the child sacrifice... The sending your child uh, to public schools, uh, which generally require various snake bites of varying degrees, and of course indoctrinate them in everything that is a lie. I got so I I, I was a very good student all of my years. I got two C's on my report cards in my entire life. Uh, one was a class in. Um, college that was too early for me medically speaking and so I missed a lot and he had a lot of questions on his um, multiple choice exams which were all multiple choice exams um, that only if you went to the class would you know what he was talking about and so I missed all those answers missed all those questions but, you know, I got them all wrong so I got to see in that class and then uh, my other class was earth science in seventh grade because none of the space stuff made any sense to me just didn't make sense. I had no idea that there was really a competing theory out there. Just didn't make sense to me. I got a C in Earth Science <laughs> as a result because I couldn't wrap my head around it. I just didn't get it. It didn't make any sense to me. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Two C's in my life. One of them was in Earth Science because I just couldn't get it. God was saying something to me then. I didn't even know didn't even know and of course you know the imprisonment that we've seen with children is just terrible it was it was bad you know back when I was I was a short paraprofessional in elementary school for a very short period of time it was bad then the kids got kids got 20 minutes for lunch in theory in elementary school some of them in functionality only got about three to five minutes to scarf their food down because they were just assembly line Go here, go here, go here, go here. Don't question, just do. Question any of these things, you know, the, the gender stuff, question the celebritism, the scientism, the child sacrifice, the educational system, the toxic snake bite, and it will hurt your business and you'll be a social outcast. Baal, Baal, was the god of the weather. Ha! Climate change, anyone? Isn't that something? People worship climate change. They also worship geoengineering. You know, they think it's a good thing to dump poison in the skies. These chemicals are, you know, not legal in the state of California because they are known to be you know, cancer-causing carcinogens. But it's totally fine to dump them in the sky on everyone and everything. I think not. But if you're a ball worshiper, it's a good thing. 
because climate change. Baal, uh, the cult of Baal was a fertility cult. So there would be extramarital shenanigans. And then they'd have, then the women would get pregnant, so they would sacrifice the children because they didn't want the children because the children were inconvenient. Do we see this today? Yes, because children are inconvenient. Another thing about, you know, this fertility part is bunnies, chicks, Esther, Easter, Ishtar. Mm hmm. Yep. Do your research. Know what you're doing. Know who you are revering. Alcohol was also part of ball worship, and it's no surprise that alcohol is all over advertisements. It's, it's in all of the Christian movies. Hallmark has just gone wow, wickedness. Same with Up and whatever other great American family. I think they all have gender confusion in them. And of course, they're all, they're all worshiping Baal because of the holidays. Worshiping Satan. Whatever. Whatever false god you want to throw in there. Um, it all is the opposite of what the Lord dictates to us. It's all the opposite of the narrow path. Which... Most people don't even know what the narrow path is because they don't study to find out what the narrow path is. They say it's one o'clock. Ball worship. Uh, one of the things that was essential to, is essential to ball worship is sexual promiscuity and licentiousness. That's all over our culture. Another very important aspect, which I have touched on a little bit of modern Baal worship, is the worship of the state. The state as God. Don't question the state. Now, one aspect of this that uh, ensnares some is the politician aspect, the politics aspect. You know, two wings, one bird. It's a selection, not an election especially now moving forward because the world's just gone to pot and it's just going to get worse. Some will say, well, we just need to get rid of politicians then. Well, if we get rid of politicians, then who rules? Technocratic rule, uh, which is primarily by scientism. So... But th there are going to continue to be rulers, if you look in Revelation, um, regarding the kings. So there will continue to be rulers. Uh, they will not be, be completely done away with as far as the human ruling aspect. But I expect that most will be so-called scientists, e, you know, i.e. Fauci, etc. Another way the state is worshipped as God is to say, well, we just need to change laws. That's what we're going to do. We're going to fight. We're going to strive, debate. Except the scripture that I obey tells me not to strive. And the law is all strife. It's all about strife. Changing the law isn't going to do any good. It's not, you can't force someone to be moral. You can't force morality on someone. They have to choose to be moral. They're just going to get better at hiding whatever is illegal. We are super paranoid about obeying the law around here, by the way. Super paranoid. But anyways, uh, the government of uh, laws, not mandates. Mandates aren't laws. Straight up. So there's that. Another form of modern ball worship that we have seen in recent years, the government will protect us from dis-ease. Right. Just like they have with chlorpyrifos, glyphosate, lead, asbestos. Do I really need to keep going? DDT, Agent Orange. I mean, <laughs> cigarettes. I mean, it's just the fact that anyone thinks that the same government that has poisoned them and told them that XYZ is healthy 
for a hundred years and then and then it comes out well yeah actually we were poisoning your children and all of these birth defects are because of us uh, don't blame us that's where you're gonna get your medical information from that's where you're gonna get your health advice from that same government okay they and you've got people who know and I've had discussions with in person that the government lies about everything. I'm talking, I had this discussion probably 15 years ago. Could have been 20 years ago. No, not 20, but definitely at least 15 years ago. He was adamant the government lies about everything. Hook, line, and sinker into COVID. Hook, line, and sinker. So they lie about everything, but they wouldn't lie about health or virus. But they'll gladly tell you to poison yourself for decades, but they're not going to lie about a virus. Cognitive dissonance is just, wow, wow, wow. Now for the gross domestic product here in the United States, the average state, their gross domestic product, comes from the state. They are spending approximately half of the gross domestic product. States are a huge employer. Government is huge. Here, I know people for some reason think that it's not, and I'm not sure why they think it's not, uh, but it definitely is for sure. I mean, they control everything by licenses, acronym agencies, rules, laws, regulations. You know, Dave doesn't do fertilizer because he doesn't have a, have a fertilizer applicator's license. I mean, he can't even do the organic stuff, you know, the truly natural organic stuff because um, he doesn't have a license. He doesn't test well. That's what it is. It doesn't matter. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't want to get in trouble for that, so... He doesn't offer that. He wouldn't do the, the, the toxic chemicals anyways. He would, he would never do that. <laughs> this is a non-toxic home. Uh, another form of modern ball worship. Modern evangelical, evangelicals and churches today, they're almost uh, entirely idolatrous. They're not worshiping my Lord. Um, and most churchgoers today see Catholicism as idolatrous but they can't see their own idolatry. <sighs> this is just like the Hebrews. This is just like the Hebrews in Jeremiah. They see the idolatry, for example, in India. They can see that. You see, well, you're worshiping a statue of Buddha. That's idolatry. They see that. Uh, but they can't see that what they do their worship is idolatrous. As t I, I don't know, I'm considering maybe doing um, a study on the uh, don't even pray for these people topic. Because my energy is very limited and I don't want to pray for people that God doesn't want me to pray for. Because that is, that is scriptural. It is in the Bible. It says don't even pray for these people. Uh, and one of the things that went down with the false accusations against us recently, um, about a month, maybe six weeks before that, I realized I hadn't prayed for those people for a while. And I was standing and doing dishes, and I was like, oh, okay, God, you know, I hadn't thought about these people for a while. I hadn't, you know, prayed for these people for a while. I should, I should pray for them. And immediately the thought that came into my head was, don't even pray for these people. Don't even pray for these people. Don't waste your time. Don't even pray for these people. And I, well, okay. Um, I need to test the spirit, so I tested the spirit. <sighs> Went to my Bible. Yeah, don't pray for these people. And then what happens? They falsely accuse us. So. Yep, yep. That spirit was the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Spirit. We today can see ancient idolatry very clearly. You know, we see the images where there's the statue and people put a baby in there and then 
I don't even know what happens. We don't, we're not going to get into that. I don't do that kind of stuff. We're not supposed to know the depths of Satan. I don't want to know the depths of Satan. We're not supposed to know the depths of Satan. Read the book of Revelation. It's in the, one of the seven churches. Uh, focus on God. Focus on him. We can see that. Most people can see that and say, oh, well, that's idolatry, that's wicked, that's evil. But they can't see that what they do is wicked and evil. They can't see that they are worshiping their job. They can't see that they are worshiping scientists. Etc, etc, etc. So the Hebrews truly believed that even though they learned the ways of the heathen, they were still worshiping God. So they combined the two. Just like today, slap Jesus on anything, slap Christ on anything, and oh, it's Christian. Christian yoga. No, there is no such thing as Christian yoga. It's literally impossible. Not possible. Mm -mm. Christian yoga? Nope. Not a thing. It can't be a thing. It is idolatry. It is wicked and evil. Another form of modern ball worship. When I was a freshman in high school, I had biology. I had a lot of science classes as you might imagine, over the years. I was a bit of a science nerd. In, in uh, college, you know, my classmates would be asking for, you know, fancy boots and all these sorts of things for Christmas. And I would ask, how many uh, peer-reviewed studies can I list that I would like in order of the ones that I would like the most? <laughs> I read peer-reviewed studies for fun <laughs> when I was in college and following as well. Not anymore because almost everything's junk science. A lot was junk science then. This uh, freshman biology class in high school, I was where I, when I was first introduced to the theory of evolution. Didn't make sense to me. I had a Bible. I read an NIV at that time. Please don't read an NIV. My old NIV teen study Bible, which is super wicked, is at a dump somewhere rotting. It, uh, it didn't line up scripturally for me. And I spoke to uh, the teacher. We lived in a so-called Christian area. I grew up in the Bible Belt. He went to church. I don't know what church he went to. He went to a different church. I spoke to him about it and um, actually later TA'd in his class and took all the classes he offered and everything. And he said, well, it can be, it can be both. You know, it, God could have made it. Um, and this is a private discussion. He wasn't, wasn't talking about God in the class. He said, well, you know, God could have designed things and then used evolution as the tool. So evolution is not a natural selection, by the way. Microevolution and, and macroevolution are not the same thing. Uh, it, the theory of evolution requires life from non-life. And apparently there's some recent-ish study uh, proving that life can come from non-life. I call foul. I call junk science. I don't even need to look at the study because I know it's from Satan. I know it is, uh, but repeatedly, repeatedly, there have been many studies attempting to, to create life from non-life and they, they never worked. Apparently one has finally worked. Yeah, right. I believe that, uh-huh. Um, people are so easily deceived. The, I, I took, by the way, all of the graduate courses in evolution at Purdue University. And there were so many holes in the theory of evolution so many holes. At the same time, the creationists are simply controlled opposition. Uh, they're full of hokum as well. <laughs> you can't trust what they say either. You can only trust what the Bible says. Uh, and, and what I say that, I mean careful study. Careful study. Not just looking at the surface, but careful study. Comparing scripture to scripture, testing the spirit, looking at the Greek in the New Testament, the Hebrew in the Old Testament. Um, you know, and, and reading in context, because sometimes context tells you more. Everything's quite clear. 
it couldn't be more clear from the Bible. Uh, and you know, it's I always found it um, interesting that the one of E.J. Capaldi, who is a, an esteemed um, psychology professor who taught the evolutionary psychology classes at Purdue, I always found it interesting that he would always avoid discussions of um, the al alleged discoveries of a species that provided the gap between men and apes, monkeys, whatever. He would always avoid those discussions. Uh, and I realized that was because he knew <laughs> there aren't any. Um, when my time at Purdue uh, came to a compl came to a close, I met with him um, and discussed some of my issues, some of my questions about the theory of evolution. And he said, "Well, what it comes," and he was not able to answer my questions. He's not able to address the issues because the evidence is clear. Um, there is no common ancestor. So a lot of creationists um, say, well, men didn't come from monkeys. No, men, evolution doesn't say that men came from monkeys. People who say that are controlled opposition. They're not listened to our Lord. All the evidence says that we did not evolve from a common ancestor. All the evidence says that life did not come from non-life. Natural selection is one engine of evolution and that is valid. We witness natural selection. The evidence is clear. Natural selection is a real thing. But that doesn't mean that all of these other things are true because this part right here is true. It's like the virology scan. People are sick. But viruses are not isolated. Viruses are not proven to cause harm. But because people are sick, all of these other things must be true. That's not how logic works. <laughs> but that's how science works. So I, I presented all this evidence and finally he said, this is just what I believe. Bingo. It's a belief. It is a religion being taught in schools. Ridiculous. There is no missing link. It will not be found. A true missing link will never be found. They'll continue to be faked, I'm sure. Evolution is modern ball worship. Secular humanism has conquered the church as well. Yeah, but people don't even realize it. People don't even realize it. Um, Secular humanism has also conquered the educational system. Modern Baal worship, Baal worship, whatever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You don't gain knowledge and then fear the Lord. You fear the Lord and then you learn things. Because he will reveal. He will give you discernment if you beg him for discernment, if you plead for discernment. For more on modern ball worship, um, there is a short ebook called Ball Worship Ancient and Modern by Stephen, S T E P H E N C Perks. It's, a, it's an ebook, it's available for free online if you want more on modern ball worship. With that, I think we're going to call it um, and we will continue in our study on Jeremiah. Don't worship Baal, worship the Lord, go study. Until next time, non-toxic out.